everyone. Good afternoon. Warm welcome. Great to see you all here. Uh, we're going to try and uh, I'm going to be very brief because we don't have a lot of time and we want to uh, get to your questions uh, as much as we can. So, of course, this is the press conference on the IMFC. You're all familiar with that. It just met the chair of the IMFC, uh, Nadia uh, Calvino, who's also, of course, the first vice president of Spain, as you know, uh, chaired the meeting. Uh, Cristalina was uh, right beside her there as the managing director of the IMF. And they've just come from the room, quite literally, so they can give you a sense of uh, what just happened. Uh, you have the chair statement. I believe that's already been distributed to you, so you can take a look at that. And we'll get to your questions. If you can keep them very brief, please, we'll try to be brief as well. With that, I want to turn to uh, the chair to make some opening remarks. Cristalina will make some very brief o opening remarks as well, and then we'll turn to you. Thank Nadia. you. Thank you very much, uh, Jerry. And you're, you're very right uh, in saying that we just come straight from the, from the closure of the, of the meeting of the IMFC, which has been in person for the first time in, in three years. Actually, this is my first uh, press conference in person also here. So it's a pleasure to, to see you. Uh, it has been a, a quite intense and productive discussion. Um, and I think it comes out with a strong message of confidence and hope, which is uh, very much needed at this uh, delicate and uncertain time for the global economy. On top of the challenges derived from the pandemic, Russia's war against Ukraine has created new risks. The shock in international markets for energy, food and other raw materials has slowed down global growth and increased inflation. It is threatening food security as well as financial stability. These have been the major challenges identified and discussed uh, during these week's meetings. Throughout the week, there has been a very strong call for Russia to stop the war against Ukraine. The war is the single most important element, slowing down growth and generating inflation, volatility, energy and food insecurity, and uncertainty. So therefore, peace is the most important economic policy tool right now. We have tried our very best to reach an agreement on a communique. Our teams have managed to agree on a full document that addresses all the issues that have been discussed at the IMFC, all the core issues that are discussed in these uh, annual meetings. And I regret very much that due to Russia's blocking any chance of a consensus, we don't have unanimity on a communique. I have therefore issued a chair statement which includes the text which was agreed by all countries participating, and I deeply regret that we're at this point again. But the key takeaway uh, from the meetings is that there are many areas where we have, in fact, come together with shared priorities and a strong commitment to address our common challenges together. Today's uncertainty calls for a carefully calibrated policy mix, for a stronger coordination between the countries, to limit spillover effects in other jurisdictions of the policy decisions, notably in most vulnerable countries. There is a call for fiscal responsibility as well as social fairness. The IMF has a key role to play in helping to mobilize financing and providing emergency assistance through new instruments such as the Food Shock Window, also the Resilience and Sustainability Trust which play a very important role and have been greatly supported and appreciated by all the members. And I'm proud to note that Spain has been the first contributor to this new trust. Unity and solidarity is now more important than ever. We owe it to ourselves and to the future generations. People matter. Uh, we need to deal with what's urgent without losing sight of what is important. And there has been a reinforced commitment to multilateralism to make sure that our actions today that matter for the future are uh, taken in the most um, united manner uh, possible. Um, I think that this is a, a, a very fast summary of what the chair statement says and what has been discussed in these very intense and, and fruitful, I think, discussions and meetings here in Washington. 
So thank you, Kristalina. Uh, thanks to the whole IMF team. Well, there was a round of applause, mm -hmm. actually, uh, for the IMF team uh, because of their outstanding work uh, in, uh, in supporting economic and financial stability, supporting most vulnerable countries in this delicate and challenging time for all of us and for the global economy. Thank you, thank you, Nadia, for uh, uh, chairing uh, the meetings so extremely well uh, during uh, a difficult time uh, for the world economy. Uh, I completely um, endorse um, the assessment you gave to what the meetings focus on and uh, how they uh, brought the finance ministers, central bank uh, governors in a very meaningful way uh, together. Uh, I am also grateful that the meetings uh, were very supportive of the global policy agenda that I shared with many of you uh, prior to the, uh, to the meetings. Um, what I want to focus here is on what uh, concretely I see as a benefit uh, for where we are headed out of these meetings. One, a very substantive uh, discussion on uh, policies leading to a more cohesive approach we have as a community uh, that benefits individual countries and it benefits the world economy. It is very important that we assess the problems in front of us correctly and we define the way uh, to address these problems uh, correctly. Uh, second, uh, very strong endorsement of the role of the IMF at the center of the global financial safety net. Uh, we have just slightly over $700 billion available to deploy. That is a, uh, a, a very encouraging for emerging markets and developing economies that are now at a point of higher uncertainty. Uh, and uh, the message from the meeting was for the IMF to use all instruments and all, all uh, its ability, should that be necessary, especially uh, use our precautionary uh, facilities. Uh, a very strong support for focusing on the most vulnerable countries, and in that regard, uh, I counted uh, almost universally the food shock uh, window uh, is seen as a very timely uh, response that can uh, provide swift emergency financing to countries that face balance of payment uh, needs because of the uh, uh, high food prices. Uh, and during the meeting, uh, there were a, a number of, of people referring to the high fertilizer prices as potentially a risk for next year, not only the risk that we face today, but the risk that may be amplified uh, next year. Uh, for the um, ability for us to expand our uh, liquidity provision capacity and reserve provision capacity through the on-lending of SDRs, uh, there was a, a, a much, much stronger sense in the room that this is a line of defense uh, that we can make available to our members, and it is also a line of offense when it comes down to addressing uh, climate and uh, addressing risks of future uh, pandemics. Uh, the countries uh, that were the first to provide support, Australia, Canada, China, Germany, Japan, and Spain. Spain mm. actually should come first because they were the first to provide uh, financing. Uh, and uh, a number of those who were in the room that have not yet pledged indicating uh, intention to pledge. Of course, this would give us more uh, lending capacity and lending capacity on terms that are very attractive uh, for our members. Um, but there was also a rec recognition that there, are, there is more that we need to do, especially in the area of debt. Uh, and uh, urging the IMF uh, to very forcefully step uh, forward with uh, uh, possible uh, solutions uh, to, uh, the, um, to bring more impactfulness in the common framework uh, and also to 
proactively work for the uh, creditors and debtors uh, to seek early resolution to uh, that uh, uh, problems, um, that we need clear guidelines, we need more predictability, and we need uh, fair treatment of all uh, creditors, public and private. Uh, I want to uh, finish by uh, uh, saying what I said in the end. We were running out of time. Nadia turned to me and said, how would you sum up this meeting? And my summing up was buckle up and keep going. And this is what we intend to do. Thank you. Thanks, Kristalina. Thanks. Thanks, Nadia. Look, yesterday uh, at the press conference, I uh, promised that uh, we would call upon people who did not get the opportunity yesterday. So I'm going to try and do that today. And in that spirit, I'm going to call upon uh, Patricia of uh, EFE right there for the first question. Okay, thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, I uh, wanted to ask uh, to Ms. Calvino, please, uh, about the, um, the main measures that has been discussed in this meeting uh, to tackle the cost of living crisis mm -hmm. and considering that Russia has triggered this situation and you said you, you make a strong call for Russia to stop the war, what was the Russian response? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, the general discussion on the, on the main message that has been expressed by, by members in these days uh, has been one of identifying the war as the single most important factor bringing about uncertainty, instability, and the cost of living crisis throughout the world. The impact of the, of the war goes well beyond the European borders. Um, most countries are suffering food insecurity, energy insecurity, uh, rising prices, or even financial stability risks due uh, directly or indirectly to the war. And there has been a strong call, I'd say it's stronger than in the spring, mm -hmm. uh, Kristalina, there's mm -hmm. been a, a strong call to, uh, for Putin, for, for Russia to stop the war. Now, obviously, the, the point of view of, of the country is different, and that, I, that is why I was referring to, uh, unfortunately, the fact that due to Russia being unable to join the consensus, I had to issue a chair statement. But this chair statement reflects the um, agreement, uh, unanimous agreement on all the substantive issues uh, discussed during the IMFC and the uh, disagreement by one of the members on the political issues uh, at, the, at the beginning of the statement. Do you want to come in? It is um, uh, very clear for, um, just on a very, on a human level, on a practical level, on objective level, stop the war. Stop the war. I'm looking at this audience. Wouldn't you be um, thinking that this is a, a most straightforward, straightforward way to get the world economy in better shape? Stop the war. And that actually echoed throughout the meeting as a, as a message uh, that uh, we align uh, with, with one exception. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kristalina. Uh, Mao Ling, you were very patient yesterday. Sorry I missed you. I'll call upon you now. Xinhua. Thank you, Jerry, for taking my question. Um, Mao Ling Xiong with Xinhua News Agency. Uh, I want to ask both of you about the uh, fragmentation mm -hmm. issue that IMF has mentioned that from, um, it highlighted the real risks of the world economic, uh, economy fragmenting further and it could impede trade and capital flows and also we on the outlook hinder climate cooperation. Some people are talking about globalization in reverse mm -hmm. I wonder whether um, Chair Calvino and uh, Managing Director Gorgieva could share your thought on this, mm -hmm. whether you think there is still reason to be optimistic about the future of globalization. Thank you. Well, uh, three points from my side. First of all, this is one of the issues that has been most uh, intensively, extensively, and, and deeply discussed in, in the different meetings we've had. We had the very good presentations by the staff of the IMF 
on the risks uh, derived from trade fragmentation, and, and this has been addressed, and there has been a, a, a quite clear call to, to avoid the negative uh, impact of this fragmentation, which would be particularly important for the uh, most vulnerable countries. Mm. Uh, the poorest of the poor uh, is an expression that has been used throughout these meetings. Uh, at the same time, uh, some members have voiced their security concerns and the need to rethink the way international trade was functioning in the past uh, in the wake of the very deep uh, and significant uh, geopolitical changes that are taking place, the tectonic shift that is taking place uh, uh, as we speak and that we need to, to tackle, to address together. And my third and, and final point was, uh, and you asked, is there any good news? Actually, we had the very good news that uh, from the uh, chair of the WTO, that trade is actually increasing and that it is uh, uh, recovering the pre-pandemic levels. And so that reality uh, is, is actually going in the direction of, of more trade. We now need to ensure that uh, other actions by, by different jurisdictions does not endanger mm -hmm. the positive drive, the posi positive impact of trade on, on global activity, uh, prosperity and, and job creation uh, throughout the world, yes. Um, <coughs> it is, uh, uh, of course, a, a serious concern uh, we have seen a uh, uh, tendency to seek alternative ways to secure the necessary uh, components for functioning of a national economy. Uh, and there are, my answer is in, in uh, uh, three parts. One, yes, we are going to see some diversification of uh, supplies. Why? Because we are now much more aware that supply chain interruptions, not necessarily driven by political considerations, but by climate disasters or pandemic, uh, require thinking of supply chains with more attention to the security of supply. For quite some time, we were thinking about cost as the one and only determinant, uh, that cannot anymore be the case. And therefore, some uh, uh, increase of multiplicity of supplies, diversification of supplies is uh, uh, happening, and it is rational that this is happening. My second point is that, nonetheless, there is a risk of geopolitical fragmentation and then geopolitics turning into geoeconomics with negative uh, impacts. And uh, one of the uh, strong, uh, the most important messages that came on this was from emerging markets and developing countries that have stressed that for them, it is paramount that they have the opportunity uh, to drive growth and employment on the basis of a more integrated global economy. Uh, that was also a message coming from small economies, small advanced economies. Uh, and actually, the predominant uh, mood in the room was we cannot possibly allow fragmentation uh, to happen because everybody would be poorer, but it would be devastating for low income and uh, for emerging markets and, and uh, developing economies. Uh, uh, one simulation uh, presented uh, this in the following way. Uh, for advanced economies, it would be loss of 2% of output. For emerging markets and developing e economies, can be 10 to 15%. Now, uh, this mm. is not uh, done scientifically. This is uh, just one simulation. But if you, if you look mm. backwards, uh, a globalization, an integrated economy, led to, in the last decades, to tripling of the, of the world economy, in which emerging markets developing economies quadrupled and advanced economies doubled. Mm. Uh, so we, if we want to have a, a secure uh, future, we do need to, to, to retain that uh, uh, efficiency that comes from uh, an integrated economy. And three, and this is where the mandate of the fund uh, uh, came and it is quite strong, a recognition there are areas where only an integrated world can be effective. Uh, climate, of course, but also cross-border payments, 
uh, the development of digital uh, money and uh, uh, trade. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I and I would say uh, there is. Uh, I feel more confident that uh, our job at the IMF is to continue to make the case why it is in everybody's interest mm -hmm. and also recognize that some shifts are necessary, not pretend that they are not. Remember globalization, uh, it didn't benefit everybody, but for quite some time we kind of glossed over this. We cannot gloss over issues that are, are real, serious, we have to recognize them and still work towards a more integrated world economy. Thank you both again. I, I'm going to turn to uh, Stefania. You were also very patient uh, yesterday. Uh, CNBC, it's Italia. Thank you for taking my question. Um, we all know the Italian result of uh, politics, but not only Italy. Are you worried about the rise of far-right movements and therefore in this uh, context, uh, the risk of political and financial fragmentation? Uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, what is happening has uh, roots and we need to address these roots. Uh, what are the roots of discontent? Why is it that people are looking for, uh, for these uh, platforms? Uh, because uh, let's be very uh, straight on it, over the last years uh, inequality in the world has gone up. Uh, and it is uh, also true that uh, uh, the attention to uh, even uh, geographically to, to, to parts of countries w that are more depressed uh, uh, perhaps has not been as, as high as it ne needs to be. So uh, from, from, a, from the IMF's point of view, we are not in politics, we are in economics. And what we look into is what is it that, that has to be front and center? It's people. Hmm. Policies are for people, they're not for hmm. the books. Uh, and are policies inclusive, are they fair? Uh, it, this is what we need to uh, concentrate uh, uh, on. I think if I, if I may add, the, the current environment is, is obviously one of slowing down growth, high cost of living or increasing cost of living in many parts of the world, deep changes that have to do with digitalization, climate change, also with the geopolitical mm -hmm, mm -hmm. shift uh, which is going on, rising inequality in, in many of our countries also. And this is a, an environment which is quite open to uh, the messages of people that have very simple and totally uh, ineffective and wrong solutions to complex matters. In this uh, regard, I think that the message that the managing director has shared and that has been actually shared by many members mm -hmm. uh, uh, during the meetings, that people matter. Mm -hmm and that they have to be uh, at the center of our policies uh, at national level and at international level is a very strong one that was shared by, by the members in, in the different meetings. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. I'm actually uh, gonna call time because I know that uh, Kristalina has to be somewhere at 2.55 and uh, Nadia has to one ca minute ago. catch a plane. <laughs> so I apologize for cutting this one short, but we did go very long yesterday and I'm going to thank uh, Nadia Calvino, our chair of the IMFC, and Kristalina Georgieva. I'll take one more question. I feel like, you know, ah. one more. This is the gentleman here. He has been like... The, moder <laughs> the moderator has been overruled. I'm overruling you. And but we're, uh, very we're short question. <laughs> okay. Because I'm going to thank very you. Short. We're going to go to you. Egypt. I would like I would like ask in Arabic, please. In Arabic. In Arabic, okay. Same. But short. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. The Egyptian government has asked for a loan some seven months ago, as far as I remember, since the start of the Russian war, the Ukrainian war. So what is the size of that loan? The discussions, the debate between the IMF and the Egyptian authorities, we've been hearing that we're almost there, almost there, but nothing happens. As far as the value of the loan, the size of the loan, and when is it going to be released, and the discussions between the IMF and the Egyptian authorities. Thank you. We, we are meeting with the Egyptian delegation tomorrow. Uh, what I can say is that uh, 
uh, we have uh, uh, resolved the big uh, uh, policy issues. Uh, we are now working on, on much smaller technical details. Uh, and uh, yes, it, it has taken uh, some time, uh, but these are not trivial matters. It, is, it boils down to exchange rate uh, policy in Egypt. It has to be thoughtfully uh, designed. And as you know, there has been also change institutionally in Egypt, uh, change uh, of the governor of the central bank. Uh, so the new governor does need to feel comfortable with uh, where uh, we are headed with the uh, policy. So um, short answer, stay tuned. It, it, it is really at the finish line to be crossed uh, virtually within uh, days. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Christalina. Thank, Thank you, Nadia. Thanks to all of you for coming today. You. See you soon.